Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for episode 12, the penultimate episode of the final season of Better Call Saul. After the last episode, things with him have just escalated, and he's really pushing the boundaries after going back in hard on these scams with uh, the two schmoes that he kind of uh, goaded into this little pit trap. And then, you know, after a call seemingly with Kim, possibly after he tracked her down after speaking with uh, Francesca, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but it definitely seems like he's not covering his tracks all that well and he's making some rash decisions. Almost, maybe, is he trying to get caught? I don't know. The whole episode, though, paralleled the his introduction in the episode called Better Call Saul in Breaking Bad, where here we get to kind of see the flip side of his interactions and experiences with uh, Walt and Jesse from the opposite perspective, as well as him kind of tailing them, getting information from Mike about this pair, and then uh, we ended with him walking into the high school where he barges in on Walt in his classroom to confront him about his identity and his real life. Um, and, the, of course, the episode this time around in Better Call Saul was called Breaking Bad. So I love that parallel and also kind of what he's doing with these two guys that he's been trying to kind of mold into his next little project to kind of get things along is also mirroring what he did or believes he did with Walt and Jesse. He was kind of, and from this kind of change in perspective, was a lot of the catalyst that really kind of sprung them down their paths that kind of just blew up from there. Uh, so it really just kind of shows just how influential Saul's involvement in their whole plan and scheme and story was. So I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, I, don't, I really don't know how this is going to come to a close for Jimmy. I think it could go either way, and I can't wait to find out. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and hop into this episode. Set your predictions now, and let's uh, get into it. Before we do, though, if you're part of the 68% of people that are watching the channel, you're not yet subscribed, or maybe you're tuning in for the first time here today, I really hope if you enjoy this reaction, maybe you'll stick around, hit that subscribe button, and leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. If you want to see the full-length reaction to this or any of the previous episodes and watch-along format, you can check those out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. You get the same thing for all the other shows we cover here on the channel, and you also get to help put in forth suggestions and then vote on what movies we cover as well. And we've got monthly Q&As, behind-the-scenes footage. I try to make it worth your while since you are going out of your way to support the channel. Helps us grow, expand the types of reactions and videos that we can do. Helps get us help with editing and stuff like that. But of course, I know I'm not going to do that. But a simple way you can help us out is just by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos. Because that really does go a long way with helping the channel grow here on YouTube. But that all said and out of the way, guys. Let's hop into episode 12, Waterworks. Here we Dude, I would do that all the time if I had one of those. You know what? I can't say. So pass along my sincerest apologies and tell them I'm swamped. Everyone can hear you bouncing that thing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I think good those are probably just foam or something but still I knew that but like still it gave me a little bit of anxiety oh look at it it's even dented in now uh what are you waiting for send her in Oh gosh. That looked like a glimpse of the cab. Oh, ho, what was that? Oh, that was kind of scary. Not scary, but creepy. Like some VHS ring shit. That silhouette that just kind of chopped it in there at the end. I wonder if that was Kim. I couldn't tell at all who it might have been. I don't know. I think this will work. I mean, technically it isn't actually mayonnaise, but... Yeah. Technically, I don't think this is mayonnaise. 
besides gold food coloring. June, did you ever even hear of that? No, it sounds expensive. And if they even make such a thing, you'd probably get flipper hands from all the chemicals oh. they <laughs> Yup. 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 <laughs> great. ABS or PVC? Oh. Great. That's the thing about Kim, man. No matter what she's doing, she gives it like 200%. No, nobody makes it that long. Well, I mean, because, I mean, think about it. It's got to fit in the truck, right? So how's it going to fit in the truck if, well, yeah, but nobody makes a truck that long. Dude, I've wasted so much time just playing solitaire, even at work half the time back in the day. Mike, don't you think if you ran a store and some teenager came in your store and tried to buy a pacifier, don't you think you'd call the police? Yeah, I sure would. Absolutely. They'd be a little surprised these days, I think. <laughs> Miracle Whip instead of mayonnaise? Hmm. I use almond butter instead of peanut. Man, just the mundane, the vanilla-ness of this whole situation, man. It's such a flip. Wow, just knew exactly what was needed without any words. Kim, there's a Victor St. Clair for you on line three. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so what do you think about that? That's pretty rude. What brand is All it? she knows okay. automatically is this we'll get the are we getting the call the the payphone call she <laughs> What do you want? I don't want anything. It's been a while. You know, just think it's been a while. Might be nice to catch up. <laughs> I thought you might want to know I'm still alive. Feds couldn't find their own ass with both hands in a proctologist. You shouldn't be calling me. Oh hey, you're awake. <laughs> You want me to say something? You should turn yourself in. To what? You heard me. A lot of you called that. You have no idea what I did or didn't do, okay? And, and, and why don't you turn yourself in? Seeing as how you're the one with the guilty conscience, huh? Mmm. Wow. Oh, wow. Mike's old booth. Is she going to turn herself in? Kim? Hi, Cheryl. I'm out front. Oh, no. <laughs> What did she go to the courthouse to get? I wonder. It's a confession. It all happened in an instant and he didn't, he didn't suffer. He didn't suffer. The lies you two made up. The picture you painted. He suffered. No remaining witnesses other than my ex-husband, assuming he's still alive. I could sue you in civil court. I could take everything you've got. <sighs> what would really be the point of that? <sighs> you know, at least she's walking the walk and talking the talk after what she said to Jimmy on the phone. You know, she told him to turn himself in. He threw back and... You know what? She's putting her money where her mouth is. Gotta give her credit where it's due, man. Man, she's so good. That's a real fucking cry, man. <laughs> All 
All right, here we are. All right, here we are. He wants to get caught. Or maybe that was a test. Maybe I'm thinking a little too highly of him after all of that. Yeah, never mind. It was just a test. <laughs> Would have been set sailing right now if he uh, didn't get even a little more greedy. It's a nice little setup right there. Is that the police from the end of the last episode? What if their ex-partner called it in? <laughs> oh no. Distraction. Oh no, or is he gonna conk him out with it? I mean, somebody had to let them know. Why else would they just be hanging out outside this guy's house? I mean, they could live in one of the houses next to this guy, but like that guy? That house doesn't seem like it'd be in a uh, officer's salary, so I don't know, man. Look, what would you call this? I don't call that. I don't know what. Would you call that a fish? Oh, they're just fucking pulling over to eat. I got half a mind of going back over there and smack somebody in their face with it. Whoa, whoa, what the hell? Funny. I mean, if the maybe he's gonna play it off like the the ice on the roads or something like that. Gunned it a little too hard. Or I don't fucking know <laughs> what the hell he thought was going on. What do you think? Pretty great, right? Yeah, it's um. Yep. I think you're gonna regret not taking your share of the sandpiper money. And then by a shitload of swamp land. I will um file these tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Have a nice life, Kim. Wow, what a fucking dick. Hey sweet cheeks, who do we got next? Let's make some money. Emilio Koyama? Maybe he's just putting on an act so she doesn't... I don't know. Hey! I, I don't have a read on that. I think he might be putting up a front. Maybe he just doesn't... Maybe he actually doesn't care at the time. She clearly does still carry a lot of that around. Maybe he's just in denial. Wants to put up a front. Yo, is that Pete? Hey, yo. Can I bump over? Oh no, it's Jesse. Thanks. Wow. What's up with this shit? It's crazy. It's like bananas all this rain. <laughs> I recognize you. You defeated my buddy Cabo. Christian Ortega. Juvie Court. Soul Baby Jesus. I mean, not like a real baby Jesus. Oh. I mean, what the hell did he even want that thing for? 
Huh? I mean, I, I still don't know. Dumbass. I told him he could go to hell for stealing something like that. I mean, but did he listen to me? No. Dude, he's, uh, he's gotten that younger Jesse a little more on point this time around. You know, he sees his dude's commercials on TV, and this is where he wants to go. Emilio, you know, a funny TV commercial is not a sound basis for life. You know? <laughs> this guy, any good? When I knew him, he was. Mm. That was an interaction I didn't know I needed. I like that a lot. Aaron Paul slipped a little back into character a lot better in this scene, too, than before. In the RV and all that. You're going to get the best legal defense in the whole wide world. Trust your old man on that. <laughs> Is she going to find Saul Goodman on the internet and put two and two together? Hi. Oh, uh, hey. Everything okay? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I uh, just lost track of the time. It sounds like one of his commercials playing out of the headset. Could be wrong, but might be hearing what I want to hear. I don't want to slow things down. I think maybe you ought to go without me. Yep. There never was a nippy, was there? What did Jeff tell you? Oh, he didn't tell me anything. Ask Jeeves told me. <laughs> I typed in Con I remember Man that. In Albuquerque. And up you popped. Big as day. Yeah, it would be that easy. Buddy understands me. And you will too. It just you have to, uh, you know, keep things on an even keel. All right? Wow, this is escalating. What have you got there? Oh, no. Put that down. Put that down. Life alert. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> God, no! What's this tease? Oh, great. Pro model 60. What the hell? Hoover. Pressure. Max Astra. Model 60. I, 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 that kind of looked like the old car that he wrecked. I don't know. I couldn't make it out, to be honest. Other than that, I mean, it was in the desert. It was in color, so it was present or in the past, technically. Wow, that snowballed. Do we caught up with Kim? Saw the taste of the new life that she's got going for herself, and then in comes Jimmy, really putting a damper on everything. But like. It's just kind of interesting how things kind of played out. How tame, safe, and just... Like, stable for Kim. No hustle and bustle, no in and out, no stress. I mean, I'm sure there's some stress in there, but it seemed pretty chill compared to her lawyer life. But like, and then just like that, you know, date she had over at her house, that dude, the whole party, it was just very, very suburban, which is a very different flavor for Kim, and she's just been settling down, trying not to stir the pot, so to speak, and here comes Jimmy, stirring up a bunch of old shit, and yeah, he uh, called her out, and she's trying to make amends confessed at least her story and she's right i mean i don't know what they can actually legally do to her because she, there's nothing to corroborate her story at all anybody that could is dead the only other person that could like she mentioned was is jimmy and hell she might get that now might be able to make a deal against saul I do think that, like, this is all building... I think, like, where Jesse got away and Walt died, I think Saul is going to be the one that actually serves time, probably, in the end. Um, That's kind of where I'm leading at in this. I mean, Kim's still not a lawyer. I love that she... she how she approached uh Howard's wife 
in the end too, to kind of like put out and get this confession notarized and then actually bring it to her herself and then lay it all out. That was a good, that was a good move to go to do, but like, yeah, the damage is done. I mean, he's like, she was like, Howard didn't suffer. Oh, he suffered all of the humiliation they put him through. Maybe not in the moment of his death did he suffer. No, but all the way up until that point, yes. And even after death, his reputation continued to suffer. Like, it's just like what they did, it didn't stop just because Howard died. It's just, it's shitty as fuck, dude. Um, Rhea Seahorn, man, she dominated this episode. That scene with her on the bus in Albuquerque was heartbreaking, but that was so real, you know, crying in TV and movies and stuff like that. Like it can be polished or clean. That was a breakdown. And I, I felt like she was actually experiencing that, like the uncontrollable spasms, the, like the distortion of your face, the pain, the tension, her eyes, all of it, the sounds she was making, it was just really great. And then just the way, subtle ways, you could see her so frustrated when she went to sign the divorce papers with Saul. It was just well done. And the surprise Jesse of it all was a lot of fun. Seeing that interaction, that was something I wasn't sure. I, I mean, it's not one I would have even thought of or that I think we could have used or needed. And having Emilio show up, you know, pre- well, his death <laughs> in pre-Breaking Bad episode one. It was a kind of an interesting little play, seeing him go to Saul. That's how Jesse, through that, he, you know, that's how Jesse knew, you know, we need a criminal lawyer. Um, and he helps him with Emilio. And that's kind of what, in turn, brings him up and, like, ah, oh, that little conversation. I do think Aaron Paul did a much better job at, like, feeling a lot more like season one Jesse in this episode than in the previous one. And the, it, it, when he showed up in the RV, it almost seemed like a little bit parody-ish, like SNL-ish. But I still loved their dynamic because I think he and Brian Cranston still bounced off each other like it was natural. But it he di it didn't feel like he quite slipped into that, that season two era Jesse. And then Jimmy just escalating, like still thinking he can get away with it no matter what, that he can just slip in Jimmy his way through everything. I still wonder if like subconsciously part of him wants to get caught, wants this to end, but he wants to go out on his own terms or he wants to, he doesn't want to like come forth. He doesn't want to admit faults, but he, part of him wants to get caught. So I don't know. Or he genuinely does want to get out of it all. It just feels like maybe there's this thing in the back of his mind that's not processing this guilt that is causing him to make these rash decisions, to have this overconfidence. I think there's something in the back of his mind that he might not be aware of that is causing him to act out like this. And it could just be as simple as his urge and his hubris to keep pushing the envelope thinking that he can get away with anything because up until this point, he has... Ah, oh, I feel so bad for Mirian though, in all of this. And uh, now, what's gonna happen now? Jeff, Jeff's fucking screwed. If uh, well, no, I mean, given what's going on, unless Saul brings him down with him, and he get when he gets caught, you know, that could that could put him in a bad spot. If this doesn't overlap with what's going on with Jeff, he could easily walk just on his own once they don't have anything to actually tie him to the robbery other than just circumstantial evidence of just being there um, without anything hard or physical. So I don't know. But I don't see Saul letting that go all that smoothly, especially now that Miriam's involved because she knows that those two are connected and whatever happened to Jeff is probably likely tied into Saul. So regardless, it seems like the two of them is going to go down in the end this is all going to come down into one final episode. So I think Kim has stirred the pot enough in Jimmy too to kind of rustle his feathers, to kind of put him into this mood and this swing. And I don't know where it's going to go. Is uh, that other um, lawyer that we saw 
going up. I can't remember his name right now. That was on the billboard at the end that, you know, he became a, his own kind of, he got his own firm or whatever, um, or turned defendant. I can't, I can't remember exactly what he had said, but could he end up be representing either one of them? Are they both going to go to prison? I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. But it was, this was a, another beautiful episode and it, 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 it brings and sheds a lot of light. Cause again, I've been seeing a lot of people thinking like these later back episodes after the fallout of the Howard Lalo situation hasn't been building it to anything or that it's been disconnected from it all. And it, I, this is that connection. This is bringing it back in. I mean, obviously things aren't going to one-to-one -one connect where we're picking up with them in present day. We've seen, we've been building off of that for the past five seasons. That's where that connects. And this is bringing it back into what we've seen. This is connecting it to that last episode where Kim left Lalo and Howard got buried at the lab. This is a, I don't know, man. I feel like some people are just like, they get a little impatient at times and don't, we don't have the full picture just yet. And it's tying in thematically to everything we've been seeing. And it's like, I, I think it, it's been really expertly crafted, in my opinion. From the performances, again, the framing. This, this, Vince and his team, Peter Gold and Vince and everybody under this umbrella. Because I don't want to keep saying it, because I keep saying it. It's like, they are just masters of the, their craft. Telling this intriguing, engaging, energized story that is just so well-weaved into everything we've seen up to this point. I think it's a master class, man. So, yeah, I, I've seen nothing weak about even these last couple of episodes. If anything, it is building the frame of mind to build us into where things have gone while tying us back to what we had just left behind with all that stuff after the Lalo situation. Um, Yeah, I uh, Jimmy's going to get caught, man. He's got, he's got, got, ah, oh. made just a little too, ruffled a few too many feathers. Got a little too big for his britches again. Got that taste after that whole thing to get him out of that situation with Jeff that he just couldn't turn back. And then that whole conversation with Kim just really riled him up. And I don't know. So maybe, maybe in turn, this is part of his, I don't know. Cause she did tell him to turn himself in. And that was when he, you know, their whole back and forth, their spat, when he started banging and broke the phone, the booth, and all that stuff before he took off. I think it's all ruffled him enough that this is probably something either he's putting on a performance or, like I said, some part of him is trying to get caught, whether he's aware or not. But beautiful episode. The finale, I can't even wait to see how they bring this to a close. So, guys, what do you think? What are your predictions? Sound off in the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Feel free to join us on our Discord. We can talk about it there as well. Links to that in all my social description box below. Follow me in each and every one of those if you're not already. And subscribe if you're not already. If you want to see the full-length reaction to this, you can check it out over on Patreon. Or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access also. And before we go, I want to shout out to Channel Legends, Manny Sherrett, Ryan, Karen, Jason Coleman, Philly Vane, Yorick, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Melita, Robert Anguiano, and Raven McGann. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this episode, guys. And I will see you guys next week with the finale, the series finale of Better Call Saul. Take care, everybody.